Hey everyone, welcome back to some more Python programming videos. We're on the Python challenge, and now we're looking at challenge number 10. We're on uh, bull.html, and uh, we are presented with this picture of a bull, <laughs> and uh, the only hint that we get here is len of a 30 equals question mark. Okay, um, I would think that that is Python code, considering the len function will get the length of something, and a must be a list, because it's being indexed at the 30th position. Uh, and it wants to know what that is, I guess. At least that's what I would assume. Let's uh, do some investigation, let's view the source here. Check it out. Uh, the title of the page is, what are you looking at? <laughs> I guess uh, to match our little, our little bull here. And it um, looks like we just got a typical picture. The bull JPEG, using a map like we had beforehand with the B for our bzip challenge, and there is uh, coordinates for uh, being clicked on here. So let's click it. Yep, if I move over the bull, my cursor changes to a clicking thing. <laughs> uh, I, guess, I guess it just means that I can click here, because I can't anywhere else in the picture. So it'll take me to sequence.txt, you can see down the bottom right, uh, sorry, bottom left, and, huh, a equals an array, one. Da, 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 da. But the array is incomplete. The list does not continue. Obviously, if I view the page source here, it's just a simple text file, so we're not going to get anywhere. What is the pattern here? One, 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 two, one. I would assume that, okay, since it's asking us to find the length of A being this sequence, right? Because this is A equals all this wants the 30th uh, term in the sequence, and I should find the length of it. But, I don't know how to continue this series. It's not like it's counting. It's not like it's adding ones to it. Uh, I'm going to zoom in. 1, 11, 21, 1211, 111,221. I don't know. <laughs> one, 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 two, one, one, two, one, 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 two, two, one, one, two, two, one, sorry. What if, like, okay, it, it adds, it gets to a tens place, and then it brings, it carries a one over here. Damn it, no, that doesn't work, because I don't know what to do to get to the next step. A equals... One, one. Two ones. One two one one. One 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 two two ones. Three ones. Two twos. Wait a sec. This index being one one <laughs> written out one one right here, and you say two ones. 2 and 1 being the next index, and then 1, 2, one, two and 1, 1 being set here, and then 1, 1, 1, 2, two ones. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Alright. I'm just gonna do some research, copy this, create a new tab. Ooh. Alright, Wikipedia to the rescue. Don't want to donate right now. Sorry, guys. <laughs> In mathematics, the look and say sequence is the sequence of integers beginning as follows. 1, 11, 21, 12. Okay, so this is the same sequence we were looking at over here in our sequence. Look and say sequence. To generate a member of the sequence from the previous member, read off the digits of the previous member, counting the number of digits in the same digit. So 1 is read off as 1, 1, or 1, 1. 
when 1 is read off as 2 1s or 2 1, and 2 1 is read off as 1 2, then 1 1, or 1 2 <laughs> That's exactly what we just did. That, That's it. That's sweet. Okay. And 1 2 1 1 is read off as 1 1, then 1 2, then 2 1s, or 1 1 2 2 1 1. So that's exactly what we've got here. And it just continues in that pattern of, like, looking at it and saying what it is, the look and say sequence. That's cool. Look and say sequence was introduced and analyzed by John Conway. Dude, he's a cool guy. He made, like, the game of life and everything. Is that right? He's a cool dude. Alright, yeah, yeah, he had the game of life. Alright, let's... How do we... How do we program? Hmm. Let's get to a text editor. Let's say we start with just one. And alright, I'm just gonna save this as ten dot pi. Start with a string of one, because I'm not gonna use integers because I can't like add things to that. And we're gonna want to loop through it, right? So for term in start. Because eventually we're going to add more stuff to this. So let's say what we're looking at, actually what we're going to be looking at previously, because we want to keep track of what we've just last seen in the loop, right? Let's say if we move on to, if we go to 1 and 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1. If we start z at 1, and then let's say, okay, we're looking through it, we loop through it, we say, um, the count, we're going to keep count of what we've seen, it's going to be, and then you say count and the number that you're looking at, so 1, 1. Now when we look through this one, it's going to say, count is going to say, okay, we found 1, 1, and now we found 2, 1s, so the next term is going to be 2, 1s. So we're going to keep track of a count and what we've been looking at previously, because in this case it's going to be 1, 2, and then 1, 1, right? So, got a count of 1, 1, and a count of 1, 2, an account of two ones. One, 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 two, two ones. Is that, is that, was, was that our next term? Yeah, it was. One, one, two, two, one. Okay. So, if we got a looking at previously variable, I'll just set that to be, right now, the, the start of it. Count is going to start at zero, and then next term, we're going to fill, but right now it's going to be an empty string. So, for term in start, if term is what we were looking at previously, then we'll add to our count variable, count plus equals one. If it's not, then we'll reset the count, we'll say it's back at one. Not at zero, but at one, because if we move on to something else, we obviously are going to have one count of it to begin with, right? That's why we're using count as 1, not count as 0 up here. And we can update our next term. So plus equals. As a, if we have multiple things, like multiple different numbers or digits in the term, we want to keep track of every single one of them. So that's why we're going to keep, uh, keep it relative addition, relative assignment. And I'm going to change our count variable into a string. And the way we would read it, like we had earlier, we would say... Okay, there are two ones. So count comes first, and then what we were actually looking at. So count plus looking at previously. Remove the sequence up here. Now every time in the loop, we want to say looking at previously is going to become what we were just looking at, the term. And then we can print out next term. Now if I run this, okay next term is nothing. <laughs> um, let's see. For term and start, if term is equal to looking at previously, which is count plus equals one. So we're adding one, and we're going to the next term. Oh, we're not even adding it to the first term. We're not even adding to next term if our start is only equal to one. Oh, so we have to do it at the end, too, right? Like in this case, when we look through it, okay, looking, the term is equal to looking at previously, so this runs, this executes, count plus equals one, 
but the code block to actually change the next term is not being run. So, oops, sorry. We should do it at the very end of the loop as well. I'll remove my demonstration up top here. Now, if I run this, hey, we get 1 1. Now, if we start at 1 1, we get 2 1. That works. We start at 2 1. 1 2 1 1. That works just fine for us. And 1 2 1 1. And then we get the exact same sequence that we would have had in our uh, in the sequence here. Okay, cool. But now we need to uh, do this over and over again. Um, we can make it recursive. Yeah, let's try and make this a function. Um, define look and say with a start. All this can be indented. And we'll return the next term, indent that as well. And now if we print and say with start, now we get 1, 1. Now we want to do this. What was it? Um, oh, I'm super zoomed in on the bowl. <laughs> we want to do this 30 times, it says. So for i in range, learn to type 30. What we'll do is we'll say, let's make a recursive start equals look and say start. So it's going to keep, it's going to pass in 1 for, because that's the first start in this function, and then it's going to be return 1, 1, and then it's going to do it again, get 2, 1, pass in 2, 1, get 1, 2, 1, 1, do it again, and again, and again. So it's like, a, this loop is doing it all for us. So now we can print out start. Oh! <laughs> and, and there it is! <laughs> Alright. Um, copy and paste this. Oh no, because it, it wanted the length of this, right? Yeah, length of A30 equals. So, print out the length start. And we get this number. 5,808. Uh, maybe this is it. Let's go into our URL up here. Change bull to 5,808. Hey! Alright, we got it. Awesome. Okay. That's pretty cool. The look and say sequence. Thanks, Wikipedia. <laughs> Thanks, Wikipedia, for explaining how this works and trying to think through it. And that's the beauty of programming here. And now we're on the 11th challenge, guys. Sweet. Sick nasty. <laughs> Alright. Let's, uh, let's end the video now, I think. Um, I mean, we, we accomplished the goal, got to the next challenge, and we'll have to try this one in the next tutorial. But thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.